What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And we are coming off a wild first week here in the SFL. Sorry it took me so long to upload this. I wanted to make sure I checked out the opening kickoff here of the NFL season, watched some of those games. I kind of wish I wouldn't have because both of my teams lost. The Packers, the Browns got crushed today by the Dallas Cowboys. And Jordan Love, my franchise quarterback for my favorite team, probably going to be missing some time. But we are back here today. That's all that matters. And not only did we have 17 subscribers join in the first episode of the SFL, we beat the St. Louis Sentinels, my old franchise team, 46 to 45. That was, look, if you guys don't watch the gameplay, let me just say this. You should, because I know in this series, you know, I get it. Subscriber players, you might want to skip ahead, see how your subscriber player did. That might be the extent of the video you watch, but I'm telling you, that was one of the craziest games of Madden that I have played since I started recording back on Madden 23. It was absolutely wild. So I'm just saying, watch the gameplay if you don't in this series because it will not disappoint. Now, here in week two of the SFL, we take on the Grand Rapids Lightning and also subscriber player on that team, wide receiver Floyd Butler. And just taking a look at some of the stuff here around the league, subscriber player Kyrie Brooks and the Silverbacks welcome the motors uh, in the game of the week. Drake May for the uh, San Jose Industrials. Looks like he had a really good first week. My, Micah Parsons from the Akron Summits. Four sacks and four solo tackles, man. I just watched him sack Deshaun Watson like two times, three times. There was like six total sacks in that game today. Browns and Cowboys, it was ugly. And then Devon Achan of the Las Vegas Jacks had a very, very good game on the ground as well. But uh, here today in uh, week two, of the SFL. We got new subscriber players joining the league. We got four of them, which is going to put uh, our subscriber count in this SFL here up to 21. And we got to also take a look and see what this Grand Rapids Lightning team is all about today. We got a lot to get into. Cue the intro, man. The Grand Rapids Lightning in the NFC North and Jalen Hurts will be our opponent today. I just watched him dispatch my Green Bay Packers uh, the other day on Friday. So appreciate that, Jalen. Travis Etienne is their superstar running back. Also, Javante Williams. That's a deadly, deadly running back room. If I do say so myself, Jacob Johnson is the fullback and then a wide receiver room. They are stacked. Amari Cooper is their wide receiver number one to go along with Mike Williams. And then the man of the episode here, Floyd Butler, rookie out of Michigan State. I like those uniforms, man. Heavy, heavy Chargers vibes. And also pretty proud of myself. If you don't know, I did design all 32 teams here in this SFL uh, series. And all 32 teams are available on the download center. So go check them out if you would like to. But Floyd here is going to be looking to cause us fits 6'1", 170 out of Michigan State. Star development as all uh, subscriber players are. But if you'd like to join my channel memberships, one of the perks there, go check them out on the channel. Your subscriber player can start out at Superstar or X Factor Dev. So pretty cool. But Floyd here, a 95 speed wide receiver to go along with 94 acceleration and also 91 agility. So we got to make sure here, prime focus number one, do not let Mr. Floyd Butler catch the ball in open space because it looks like he could cause some serious, serious damage to our secondary. They also got Sam Laporta and Tommy Tremble, Bob Tunyon there also in the tight end room. Jed Wills is the left tackle. Could be a great player if he could ever just stay healthy. Isaiah Wynn, left guard. Uh, Tyler Shatley, not the best offensive line. Yeah, I would say so. Sean Ryan is the right guard. And then kind of stay face a little bit with Michael Wenyu at the right tackle. But offensive line... I would love to get some pressure with our subscribers, Austin Kringle, Aiden Leslie, Silas Vaden, our subscriber defensive line, hoping that those guys can uh, can get home to Jalen Hurts today. Calais Campbell, longtime vet here on their defensive line. Osa Odigizua and Levi Anzarike are the defensive tackles. Linebackers, they got Kayvon Thibodeau, pretty good, not a bad option. 
Lamonte David, great option. One of the best middle linebackers in the league. Been that way for a very, very long time. 13 years to be exact. Drew Tranquil, also pretty good option at linebacker. And then their secondary, they got Jamel Dean, Michael Carter, Avante Maddox. So pretty good. Nothing crazy, but also, you know, solid players there. Julian Love is the free safety. Marquise Bell is the strong safety. They got Matt Wright kicking the ball away and Brian Anger punting the ball away. And as I mentioned, four new subscribers joining the league. If you guys would like to join the league with your creative player, check the pinned comment down below. It'll have all the info. We are up to 21. We had over 50 in the Madden 24 uh, iteration of the SFL. So join. It's a great time. But our very own Tuscaloosa Terminators here, Jaden Taylor, returns to the league. He was a wide receiver. In the first SFL, now converted to a DB, and we, he is going to be looking to help our suspect defense that allowed 45 points last week, and really it was the play of the secondary. They just could not make any plays on the ball, but Jaden here, very fast, 95 speed, good in man and zone, which I love to see. Also very agile as well, and he's got some other good traits like 83 awareness, pretty, pretty strong for a DB too, so hopefully Jaden can bolster up our kind of suspect secondary and also returning for his second season in the sfl we got wide receiver alexander Klublek. shout out at honey badger on yt in the comments 6'5, 243 pound rookie out of miami a rare build for a pass catcher and he was pretty good last season looking to keep that momentum going he is great in the short and the intermediate range with 94 route running in both the short and the medium route so he can get open. There's no doubt about that. And uh, he can also catch the ball pretty well. Not the fastest guy in the world, but hey, I mean, he's 6'5", 240 plus. Give my man a break. But Alexander could be a true weapon on the Portland Destroyers here. And I'm sure he is going to be looking to pick up where he left off last season. New subscriber halfback on the Albany Argonauts here in the AFC East. We have quite possibly the best name in the world, rivaled by maybe only Tubby McDouble in the in last season of the SFL. We got halfback Bobby Donuts, 5'8", 201 pound. Darren Sproles type of uh, inspired type of player. I like those Albany Argonauts uniforms. I hope you guys like these teams too. I put a lot of thought and a lot of time into making them. But Bobby here, uh, he is going to be looking to elevate the Albany Argonauts who did win their first game. So shout out at our Jesus 1111 in the comments. Pretty solid halfback. I mean, nothing that he really is bad at. He's got 93 speed, 95 ball carrier vision, and 96 agility. So he is going to be able to find those, you know, shoot those gaps, find those lanes, hopefully make guys miss in the uh, in the open field. And Bobby here, welcome to the league. Happy to have you and hope that you excel on the Argonauts. And also returning for his second year in the SFL, we have quarterback Lucas Thomas of the Boulder Rockies in the AFC South. Shout out at Thomas Gutierrez in the comments. And I, the Boulder Rockies uniforms, I mean, just look at that goatedness. This may be one of my favorite designs with the with the brown and the baby blue. It really, really hits. It really pops for me. But Lucas here, 5'10", 184, field general quarterback out of Texas. And Lucas Thomas has 93 throw power, 95 deep accuracy. Rarely do you see a quarterback who is more accurate in the deep range than the middle and the short range, but Lucas has somewhat of a cannon and is very, very accurate throwing downfield. Can also uh, excel off a of play action too with the 88 play action and 86 speed, not a bad option. So Boulder Rockies and new QB Lucas Thomas going to be looking to make some noise in the AFC South. We are heading down to Hydro Electric Field in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And going to see what these Grand Rapids Lightning team is all about. We were at home in Skynet Superfield last week. So this is going to be our first away game. And if we get a look at our away uniforms here, those are the Skynets. We're not going to rock the Skynets quite yet. Saving those for a rainy day. But the all whites with the pink and, you know, it was actually purple when I made it in Team Builder. But kind of like the way that it uh, turned out. And the Lightning here, they're going to be rocking their home inspired chargers uniforms or maybe we go with the heavy bolt i think we're gonna rock with the heavy bolt i want to showcase some of these alternate uniforms that i made for you guys to see but 
If you guys are fired up for the SFL and you're loving this content and you want to see more, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Almost at 1K subscribers, the grind continues, and I will do an NFL jersey giveaway once we get there. But without further ado, guys, we are ready for action. Let's head on down to Hydroelectric Field in Grand Rapids, Michigan and get ready for the game. Bo Nix with 510 yards last week. I forgot about that. Not happy about the three picks, but the four touchdowns and over 500 yards. He didn't do that in his debut today against uh, the Seattle Seahawks. He didn't play that great, and the Seahawks did get the victory, but at least in this Madden uh, SFL universe, he balled out and looking to pick up where he left off, and we see a little bit of mix of a crowd there. I see some some pink jerseys in the crowd so we'll see how well tuscaloosa travels it's a pretty you know opposite end of the map south to the north here going up to grand rapids and uh the lightning and their heavy bolt uniforms gonna be kicking the ball off to us first and we are gonna return this with patrick peterson peterson has a little bit of daylight pretty good return i thought i put Jaden taylor in that kick return role may have to check the depth chart but at any rate pat pete makes a good return and here comes Bo Nix coming off his 500-yard performance last week. That, again, that game was insane. Watch the gameplay. Gameplay, at least if if the first episode is any indication on how the gameplay is going to look in this series, man, oh, man, are we in for something. And I think we're going to start the ball, start off running the ball here to our big-time weapon, Christian McCaffrey, and there's just no blocking Levante David gets to us, and we're able to just barely salvage two yards as we get a look at CMC stats from the first week. Not bad. Like that logo in the middle of the field, man. I'm I'm very happy with the, how these teams turned out. Let's go something short, safe, hopefully get a completion to CMC. Blockers are out in front. Tried to hit him with a deadly spin move. We were not able to capitalize as Marquise Bell, the safety, gets us but we did achieve the first down which is all you can really ask for i would like this not to be a shootout <laughs> now don't get me wrong that game was most definitely fun but i'm not sure if my blood pressure can really handle many games like that so see oh cmc has tons of space out on the outside trying to make a man miss would love to get that running game cooking he did okay last week but cmc we need to get him over 100 yards that's Pretty much where CMC lives week in to week out. Good start there as he gashes the defense for a big one. Come out shotgun here with Bo Nix. Three wide receivers and the chief, David Njoku. I'll just dump it underneath here to Romeo Dobbs, who talk about big games last week. I believe, I want to say he had over 200 yards. I mean, with 500 yards from your, uh, from your quarterback, you're bound to have a guy go over 200. But I do believe that Romeo Dobbs did achieve that feat. Hope, I wish he would achieve that feat in real life. Packers are going to need him. But Christian, Bam. oh, another nice gain. Does Christian have the speed? He does not. He has stopped there uh, at the 11-yard line. But starting out great for Christian, averaging over 10 yards per carry. And we get this thing down to the 11-yard line. That was an outside run. Audible into an inside run. And pretty good call from head coach Todd Bowles. Kind of going with the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality because the running is working well. Christian diving forward. Stopped mere shades of the end zone, but four rushes for 47 yards. He was not getting this, getting it going like this in the, he kind of started to get it going as the game progressed, but he was not getting it going like this in the first game. Let's see if he can cap this drive off here. With The touchdown, oh, instant pressure in the backfield. Did not even have a chance on that one. That is Osa Odigazua. In first negative play that these Terminators have really seen, everything else has been pretty much positive. Um, now, hopefully, with some meshes here, we can just hit Romeo Dobbs or D-Hop or somebody. That's going to be a pick, isn't it? Yeah, that was a dangerous, dangerous throw. Shouldn't even have done that. Probably going to be looking for Dobbs or maybe Najoku leaking out here. Bo Nix, can he escape the pressure? He is going to escape the pressure. Look at Bo Nix with the wheels. Had to turn that thing all the way out to the right side. I thought about throwing it to D-Hop or maybe Najoku, but again, Bo Nix did throw three picks, even though he went over 500 yards 
cannot be throwing three interceptions every single game. That is a recipe for a disaster. So Bo Nix just going to go ahead and do it with his legs. And uh, Terminators do strike yeah, first blood, which is absolutely him. awesome. Not the best extra point kicker, so got to watch out for that. But we will strike yeah. first blood and go up 7 nothing on a 9-play, 65-yard drive that, at, that lasted a little over four minutes. Offense, though, not what I'm really worried about. We scored 46 points, so we had no problem putting up points last week. And here comes Jalen Hurts in those heavy, heavy bolt uniforms with the lightning bolt accents. You got to love it. He had 217 last week, no touchdowns, no picks. So he just kind of showed up and took care of business and uh, his team got the win. So I guess whatever he did, it was <laughs> it was just enough to get the job done. But we really need to get some pressure here. We have a star studded defensive line with our subscriber players and really just want to get them in the backfield. Jaden Hurts. Wow. One handed catch there by I think that was Mike Williams. Not quite sure. Didn't see the number. It is kind of a little tricky to see the numbers on these jerseys, but that's OK. I still like them. Maybe I should have put like a uh, black accent or something there to to help me see but no worries it's gonna be a handoff there that's gonna be Travis Etienne and he is brought down there for only a gain of three and that will bring up third and seven all right guys let's just play some good lockdown defense gonna use her up on TJ Edwards who had a big game in real life Bears got the win and Edwards is gonna be the first one to hurts and he is there to bring him down so mission accomplished we did not see too many punts last week if any I mean, it was almost 100 points. It was close to 100 points scored between the two teams. So not a lot of punting, but we do force the Grand Rapids Lightning to punt. And there's subscriber Jaden Taylor. Okay, yeah, I, that's right. I made his kick return 99 because I just wanted to have a subscriber player returning kick. So we'll see how effective he is in that role. And we'll also see how effective this man Bo Nix is on drive number two. Here on second and 11 behind the sticks, going to have to go through the air. Maybe D-Hop gets open on this corner. If not, we do got Dobbs on the underneath route, which that is going to be the move. Dobbs still going and just gets completely leveled and upended there by Kayvon Thibodeau, the three-year man out of Oregon. And that's going to bring up third and two. We get D-Hop open on this quick slant route. I really hope those linebackers blitz, which they're not going to, but we got the Chief David Njoku. He got injured in today's game, too, for the Browns, which you never like to see. And he couldn't hang on to that one. And how about punts by both teams back-to-back? -back? That was a rarity, as I mentioned last week. And I am really uh, pretty much booty cheeks in the punting department. But that one does look pretty good from A.J. Cole. Going to pin him inside the 20 at the 15. So I'd say mission accomplished. See what hurts in the boys here. Floyd Butler and them. We'll see what they do. On their second drive, first drive, they really couldn't get anything going. And oh, come on, come on, pick that. Xavier Woods not able to do it. Marcus May going to uh, get there and finally make the stop on Sam Laporta. I thought we had a pick for sure if we just would have jumped and put our hands up. Xavier Woods had a chance. And if that thing would have been a run, Travis Etienne would have got crunched. But a big dagger play by Hertz and these Lightning. It is uh, just a bit hard to see with these heavy bolts, but that's okay. Let's use her up on subscriber Austin Kringle here. Maybe he can get some pressure in the backfield. That would be lovely. See if Hertz is going to snap this. He is, and Kringle trying to get to him, but there is Sam Laporta again, and of course I missed the tackle, and the Lightning are going to respond and answer. Sam Laporta was a big, big part of that drive, as he tends to be a big part of all the drives in Detroit as well. And Rapids going to tie it up. We got 24 seconds to go until second quarter. Let's see how the Terminators can respond on this drive. I'm going to send Tyler Boyd streak. Uh, Romeo Dobbs could be. Oh, Tyler Boyd. No, I did not see that safety. Oh, the uniform. He kind of blended in there. I thought we had one-on-one -on -one coverage. But no, it's Julian Love, the safety. That one's 100% on me. I know yellow jerseys, green turf. But I'm telling you, when you're out there, Scan in the field. I saw Tyler Boyd beat his man, and I thought that he was wide open. A bullet pass probably would have got there. Of course, I uh, kind of threw it up on the touch pass, but it is a little tricky. You know, the jerseys don't necessarily blend in 100%, but yeah, when you're out there, it's kind of 
Kind of a little tough to see Roquan Smith. Oh, come on! Picked right back, and that was usurped by your boy. First interception of the season. And is it the first interception of the season? I don't know, but Roquan Smith going to strut his way. Wow, I was usurped. I was lurking with him the entire time, and I baited Jalen Hurts. So back-to-back -back picks from these quarterbacks, and what a way to end the, uh, the first quarter here. He was looking to hit ECN in the flat. Roquan Smith said, uh-uh, uh-uh, not going to happen. And pending the extra point, we are going to go up by seven, which is just lovely. And this looks to be another exciting game, just like uh, Sentinel's game was last week. How will Hurts respond here? Hopefully not good. Another interception would be awesome. I'm going to use her up on D-tackle Silas Vaden. It's just going to be ETN, and he's met there by Jaden Taylor and others. There you get a look at number seven. And how about those Terminators logos on the helmet? I am. That's one of the reasons why I chose this team specifically was because of the logos. I'm going to have Jax Vaden, the other Vaden, uh, play man coverage there on Amari Cooper. I don't really want him that open. And we got tons of people in there. Not even sure I saw number 91, Silas Vaden, our subscriber D-Tackle. But there were just tons of Terminators. It was looking like Judgment Day, Arnold Schwarzenegger and his buddies. All the Terminators out there. And now we got them in a big third down. I'm going to have Marcus May play coverage as well. I just don't want that many receivers out there. And how about Sam Laporta catching everything that's thrown his way? Third catch for 87 yards. Aiden Leslie was out there trying to play coverage. Didn't work too well. And fresh set of downs here for the Lightning. Let's send some heat at Jalen Hurts here. He's coming out empty backfield. Roquan Smith going to be one of them. And there's a pick by Xavier Woods. It's pick city. I'm juking the wrong way. I can't. So I got two series going here. This one and the Akron Summits. One of them, we did not have any picks. Maybe it's the Summits franchise. I don't remember. Look at that defense celebrating. All I know is we got two picks in this game. And our defense is bouncing back from that terrible performance last week and doing it in a big way against Hurts and these Lightning. And I am happier than a pig in poo-poo here in this first half, but we know how games go here with me behind the sticks. That could change instantly, so definitely not going to take my foot off the gas. I would like McCarthy to put his foot on the gas and kind of play similar to how he was in the first quarter. He's kind of cooled down a little bit, but uh, we have been kind of pass-heavy here. So on second and nine, we got routes all over the place. Lots of crossing routes. Let's see who gets open. Najoku. Oh, perfectly placed ball by Bo Nix. He had to thread the needle between multiple defenders. And the Chief kind of getting into it there with Julian Love. I like the intensity. And what a dot. Perfectly placed ball by Bo Nix and ya boy. We could have McCaffrey get open on this route out of, out of the backfield. Maybe Tyler Boyd, too. But I kind of like the idea. It is going to be boy. Bang! Oh, he dropped it! We put that thing in the... I mean, maybe the ball was overthrown slightly. Slightly. But that was a catchable ball. I don't even know why Tyler Boyd necessarily had to die for it. But definitely a missed opportunity there for sure. Can't be doing that. We had a chance to go up 21-7. I'll take a 17-7 lead, but just got to make sure that our defense keeps playing hyped up the way that they have been so far. Now, I'm going to use her up on uh, TJ Edwards here. Going to be watching Travis Etienne, hoping that he stays in to block. But so far, our man coverage with our linebackers has been pretty good. And Roquan Smith does have that pick uh, earlier, but that time he did let Sam Laporta get Roquan Smith on Sam Laporta. That's definitely a mismatch. As good as Roquan Smith is, I mean, he's just not going to be able to really stay with Laporta too much in open space. And Hertz identifies the uh, mismatch there and makes us pay. So single back now, it's going to be, oh, there's Smith. I had a chance on ETN. ETN breaks a tackle. Roquan Smith is the guy that comes in to clean up, do the cleanup work after only a pickup of three. Lightning kind of moving on this drive here. They haven't been doing that as of late. Here comes Aiden Leslie, and he's there to crunch Jalen Hurts. Number 68, shout out at Aiden the dog in the comments. Not sure that should count as a sack. It was no gain on the play, so that should be a sack for Aiden Leslie. And now we're going to have Alex Singleton try to shoot a gap here. It's ETN, and Silas Vaden was there to get the initial hit, but... Xavier Woods ultimately is the one to stop it. And that will bring us to the two-minute warning in what's been a fun 
first quarter, Lightning looking to draw the score a little bit closer. Obviously, Tuscaloosa, we're hoping to prevent that. But even if they score here, we should have a little bit of time to make something happen. And how about Patrick Peterson? Just play man coverage over there on Amari Cooper. Austin Kringle trying to get in there. Jaden lay a big hit. And uh, Mike Williams wisely, wi or Travis Etienne wisely goes out of bounds uh, because Kringle was coming to lay the wood on him for sure. And how about we play a little pressure here? Uh, not, not pressure, I'm sorry. Send some pressure, yes. Roquan Smith, he's one-on-one -on -one with the receiver. And is that Floyd Butler? Finally, there's Floyd Butler, number 11. Good to call his name, but not really, because I was hoping to obviously stop him. What? But Floyd makes a nice first, first down catch, and clock does not stop, however. So we're going to have TJ Edwards blitz again, or maybe we'll, ah, uh, uh, maybe if I can time this right, we'll send him. Why not? Hurts! Oh, Vaden had a chance on him, and it's going to be a touchdown to Mike Williams. So nice response by Grand Rapids. We do have time, though, over a minute or close to it. Minute nine seconds, all three timeouts. We got a chance to, to go down here, put up at least a field goal, right, before halftime. I'd be feeling pretty good about that. But just got to make sure number one thing is we don't give the ball back to the Lightning on a turnover or like a quick three and out. I see D-Hop on single coverage, so maybe if that safety cheats down a little bit, which he kind of did, and that's going to be another intercept. I, I just can't stop throwing picks with Bo Nix. And a nice little rhyme there. Nice rhyme. Michael Carter, yeah, I, again, that's just no excuse, really. Um, that's just me thinking that since D-Hop is getting pressed, he's going to win. Receivers don't always win on press. Matter of fact, a lot of times they don't. And there was really never even a window to throw the ball there. And what did I say? Only thing we couldn't do is give the ball back to the Lightning on a turnover or a quick three and out. And it was looking like it was going to be a quick three and out if it wasn't a turnover. But it was. Come on, get that right back. Wow, Roquan Smith got cooked. Oh, wow. That was Travis Etienne. I thought, I mean, I was mashing the triangle button for jump. I mean, it, it was good coverage. Yeah, just at the very last second, it was a well-placed ball from Hertz. And after it was just 17 to 7, Lightning put up 14 unanswered. Defense got to tighten up a little bit. Would really love to get some men in the backfield, get some sacks on Hertz. Haven't uh, really established the pressure too much. Good defense by Xavier Woods. That was on subscriber receiver Floyd Butler, too. And, of course, Woods does have that interception from earlier. So looking to go double. And now we have Roquan Smith's X Factor activated, which means we can see the routes on the field. We know uh, <laughs> sometimes that's not a good thing because I overplay certain routes. You saw it happen that time. I made Roquan Smith leave his spot in the middle of the field, and Sam Laporta was wide open for about his 43rd catch of the game. And again, uh, now that I see Le uh, Amari Cooper's route, I probably will focus on that one a bit, but it's going to be Mike Williams, and that actually might be a score unless we can hawk him down, which we do. But Jalen Hurts really starting to put it together here. Over 260 now and threatening on the four yard line. Our defense looks so good to start and I just don't know what happened to him. I know what happened to the offense. It's me pressing buttons on the controller. That much is obvious, but as far as the defense goes, I don't really know what happened to him. Look at Silas Vaden and Aiden Leslie, a couple subscribers in there to get a big TFL and that will definitely help our cause. We got blitzers again, Roquan Smith and Alex Singleton, both gonna be trying to shoot gaps and beautiful ball carrier vision by Travis Etienne. He uh, just bounced off a tackle there and found his way into the end zone. And this game's starting to get not out of hand, but this is definitely a must score drive for us for sure. As really all drives in Madden, at least when I'm playing seem to be must score drives, but that was a five play 77 yard drive that took less than two minutes. Can I have that if you're the Terminator defense? Now, I did make running it outside our focus here. Uh, really want to get Christian McCaffrey going. And, ooh, nice move from McCaffrey. That was probably going to end up being a uh, stop for no gain or so. But he's able to turn it into a gain of five just with the sheer juke ability that he brings to the table. That's a pretty nice start to the drive. We're going to go 
Oh man, D Hop on the press. Do I do it? Do I really do it to myself? I need Tyler Boyd on a drag. I mean, we gotta get something going here. So maybe, maybe D Hop does get open. I mean, he has a step. Come on, D Hop. There it is. And he hangs on to it. Perfect. That's what I was trying to do earlier when I threw that pick. That time I did see the safety run up the middle. Looks like he was playing to playing the run or something. I don't know. But it was a good ball by Nix. I high pointed it. D Hop catches it in stride. Big play for Tuscaloosa. Uh we'll try T E drive out of single back. I don't necessarily I don't necessarily want to pass it, but I I do got a semi good feeling that maybe Pat Fryermuth or Najoku can get open. It is Fryermuth and he gets upended there but does pick up a nice gain of nine, making it second and one. I just need CMC to pick up one hard fought yard here, please. He's not gonna. Actually loses two, beautiful, beautiful. Just what I wanted. And this almost seems like, this seems like a good time for screen. Uh, I typically like to rock coach suggestions, but sometimes I do see D hop in the press, but not really going to entertain that. This is going to be uh, Christian all the way. Actually, JK is almost going to be a sack on Bo Nix because we had instant pressure there. That was Drew Tranquil, the linebacker. And now coach says go for it. I, I mean, we would need two at some point anyways, but I'm just going to I'm going to uh, take my points here because um, then then we would still need two. Right? We would still need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So I'm going to, I shouldn't say take my points. I'm going to try to take my points. That should be a good kick, though, by Justin Tucker. Actually wasn't the best, but it does squeeze in. That just makes more sense to me because now touchdown, two-point conversion ties it. I'm not confident enough in myself and don't want to give the ball back and not put up points at all. So going for the field goal just seemed right to me. Lightning had a great kickoff return too, taking it to the 46 and Jalen Hurts now starting to heat up. Uh, this should probably be a running play. I am going to send pressure into the backfield. Got to make sure, watch and make sure though, if it's an outside run that we have someone like Xavier Woods usurred up over here. It is going to be ETN and only able to find two. Nice stop there by the Tuscaloosa defense and Roquan Smith. Then in pressure again. Hopefully it's a run because we are not very well equipped to stop the pass. Of course, it is going to be a pass. And Roquan Smith out there misses a tackle. Are you kidding me? Tommy Tremble shakes off the tackle of Roquan Smith. I don't know. Roquan Smith should win that matchup. But it was a nice play by Tremble. And Grand Rapids is moving the ball again. Aside from those first couple of drives and, you know, that one that resulted in a pick later on. They've really been moving the drive, moving the ball on every drive after that. Uh, this time, Hertz is going to be empty backfield, though. And we got Roquan Smith. Smith there. Come on. How in the world does Mike Williams shed off that tackle? Like, Roquan Smith was sitting behind him. It was a curl route. He had all the momentum in the world. And somehow, Mike Williams bounces off him like a freaking pinball. Second and three here. Lightning have a fullback in the game. So that's my cue to use her up on Alex Singleton. It is going to be an outside run to ETN, and we're there to meet him with about everybody on the defense aside from the DBs. And Travis ETN, he can't be. I was going to say he was hurt, but he can't be. Uh, injuries are off, of course, on this franchise. So let's see what Hurts does here on third down. Austin Kringle going to drop out. Where is he going to go? Of course, it's Sam Laporta because it was always going to be Sam Laporta. Because it's been Sam Laporta all freaking game. Grand Rapids capitalizes on another dagger play now into the red zone. I'm going to have to use up a man on Laporta like every single time. I mean, he's been he's been the guy and he is lined up there on the outside. So I need uh, TJ Edwards to just kind of at least shade over to that side. We'll see if he does give the ball to ETN here. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. He is gonna and ETN going to score. So back to a two-point, uh, two-score game. Grand Rapids is cooking up here in Michigan. And game not over, but it's going to take pretty much a flawless fourth quarter for us to even hope to come back and tie it. Going to operate on play action here. Need a shot, need a big play. And I just, I mean, I have no time. Like, I did not even attempt to throw that because it would have been a, something more disastrous. Mark my words. It would have either been a fumble or a throw on a sack, pick. 
So I just figured cut my losses, take the sack, and that's going to bring us to the fourth quarter. That was actually, now that I think about it, that was left tackle Trent Williams' side of the field too. Like he's supposed to be the best 99 rated overall superstar player. And our offensive line is not too bad. Uh, maybe a little old, maybe a little bit of age in there. But I just feel like they've been kind of getting tore up really in both these games so far. Now I realize Bo Nix did have you know, 500 yards in the first game, but we were still under duress, I feel like. So gotta, definitely gotta figure that out. And I pressed the wrong button. That's by his grace, by his grace. It's gonna be uh, a great decision, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I was not trying to go to Romeo Dobbs. I was trying to go to DeAndre Hopkins. I pressed square instead of triangle, but if that was yeah down. that was a well executed play by me all right tuscaloosa come on need to need you to make some smart plays here get something going we're gonna go to the chief najoku no it's boyd i'm sorry for the disrespect tyler boyd that was a great corner route and i read that thing beautifully i don't know why i thought that was najoku out there it certainly wasn't and coach is saying ce attack so this one very well could be najoku but Got to be able, I like to roll out on these plays. If I can roll out on these plays, I'm usually able to hit the tight end. But it all depends on what that linebacker does. He's allowing me to do it. Come on, Chief. Hang on to that ball. Chief still going, refusing to be denied. A man's play there by David Najoku. And that keeps us in the ball game. We're going to have to go for two at some point anyways. So do we just go for it now? Um... I mean, we can we can go with the Y stick. We're going to need to go for two at some point. And I mean, what is what is going on there? Am I going to get baited if I uh, throw this to Hopkins? I mean, surely no. He's well, it would help if you turned around to catch the ball. D hop. There was no DBs out there on him at all. And he just never turned around, never looked for the ball. He was wide open. It was a good throw by Knicks. And that, that's not good. That does not bode well for your Terminators, especially if we can't play defense. I mean, I almost want to guess run up the middle here because surely it would be a run, but knowing me, yeah, see, I would have I just got cooked on that. And wide open is Floyd Butler out of Michigan State. Subscriber, wide receiver number 11. And we're at risk of, I don't know why they have us like in prevent defense. I mean, the Eagle, uh, I said the Eagles because of Jalen Hurts. No, not the Eagles. The Lightning are coming out in a passing type of formation, but got to be cognizant of Travis Etienne back there, which it is going to be another throw, and you got to be kidding me, man. Jaden Taylor can't make the tackle. Xavier Woods can't make the tackle. And we're at risk of allowing 40-plus for the second straight week in a row, and I just don't understand why this defense is so bad. Would like a chance... Even though it's slim, I get it. Would like a chance to get the ball back and, you know, onside kick it, something like that. Edwards, can he get back to Hurts? He cannot. Everything is underneath right now, which is good. Sam Laporta also 10 for 165. That is absolutely disgusting. Now do they run, though? That's the question. I'm going to use her up on Austin Kringle. Uh, Got to be cognizant of the receiver out there. It is play action. Hurts. Okay. I mean, it's a long shot, yes. But Ben, but don't break. We do hold them to a field goal. We would have to score quickly, get the ball back on an onside kick, and then score again. It's still a two-possession game. Um, so, you know, pigs can fly, I'm told. I have to see how this drive goes. I'm going to go play action here. Could get somebody open on the crossers, but I'm just a little worried about the protection. Najoku, perfect corner route. That was what I called earlier. There wasn't Najoku. There was Boyd. And really, that wasn't even my first read. I kind of scanned the field. I was looking at the crossers on the left side, but I saw Najoku was open. It was a good place ball by Bo Nix, and the result is pretty good now. We got Hopkins in press. We got McCaffrey on the Texas route. And I held the ball way too long. And we're just going to take a sack, which seems strange. But that may not be the worst thing in the world there. Um, because I could have thrown a pick, something like that. That would have been even worse. Let's have McCaffrey block. 
And maybe if I can roll to the right a little bit, Tyler Boyd or D Hop will get open. We're gonna just throw a pick. Okay. Yeah. Drew Tranquil, who's just been having the game of his life. Back to back games with three picks from the rookie out of Oregon. Really, me? It's not looking good. And this game is really just all but over. Lightning score, but only a field goal. So it is still technically a two score game. We would have to score. Get a two-point conversion, get an onside kick, and score again. With 235 and a quarterback that you're about to see just can't stop throwing picks, we'll see if that's what they highlight. Oh, yeah. I mean, great angle there uh, with the first down marker covering it up. That one, that last one was boneheaded. Um, I mean, really, they've all been kind of boneheaded, but that one, that last one especially, you know, pretty much threw it uh, right to Drew Tranquil. And it's been a rough start. For rookie, for rookie Bo Nix. I mean, over 500 yards, yes, that's great. But you can't be uh, just launching interceptions like that. David Njoku, though, he's having a big game and going to get pushed out of bounds at the 46. Go screen pass here. I kind of like that, but got to make sure we get it off. Christian McCaffrey going to get the first down. No, they say he stopped inches short. That's very annoying uh, because now we got to worry about Picking up a first down, so that kind of sucks. Second and in inches, I mean, maybe, honestly, I just want to get this first down. So we're going to give the ball to CMC, running it up the gut. Christian, he had a good game, but, you know, we, we kind of had to go away from him, unfortunately, because of just the way the game played out. You know, we had to become pass heavy. Two minute warning here, game probably over, but we're at least going to give it a shot. If the protection can hold up, we may have Tyler Boyd here. But, of course, that is a big if. Boyd catches it and still going and gets out of bounds. So, stay with me here. Um, I don't think I've ever recovered an onside kick. I mean, with all three timeouts, we wouldn't even necessarily have to go onside kick depending on how fast we score here. But that probably is what would happen. Christian McCaffrey looking for blockers. And, I mean, that's just kind of a case where... You know, the runner is just a little faster than your blockers. I kind of needed them to be a little bit quicker, but, you know, can't really argue with the results too much. Caffrey or Dobbs here, I'm thinking, is the move. We're going to go Romeo, and Romeo scores. So, yeah, we uh, – let me think about this here. Yeah, eight points would put it – I guess we don't have to go for the two-point conversion. No, we don't, actually. But the question remains, do we, I think we got to kick the onside kick, right? I think we got to, because regardless, like, A, I just don't feel confident that the Eagles, I keep saying the Eagles because of Jalen Hurts, that the Lightning wouldn't get the first down. They say kickoff because we do got all three timeouts, but I'm going to go onside. Uh, we'll go with the high kick. And just maybe hope for, you know, a crazy bounce. That does happen. Justin Tucker's going to kick it right to him. Yeah. Okay. I got to figure out these onside kicks. Maybe the high kick isn't the way to go. I kind of thought that it was. Going to run commit again. Surely it's a run here. My only fear is if they decide to go outside with ETN, which they won't. And we're there to clog the lanes up. Very curious. Play calling here for Dan Campbell. This team used to be the Detroit Lions, staying in Michigan, of course, with uh, with Grand Rapids. But see what type of they're coming out. Yeah, I mean, this will probably I probably won't run commit on this one just in case it's like a play action. I mean, I'm sure it would still be a pass, but, you know, I don't know. You never know. It is it is a pass. See, and of course, they're going to get it because why wouldn't they? Yeah. Ball game to the Lightnings. 419 yards for Jalen Hurts, and I guess we allowed less points than 45, or less, as a matter of fact. I mean, yeah, they're going to go into Neal here, and that's going to be ball game. It was hard fought, I guess, but too many mistakes by me. Defense decided to take a vacation in that second half, so still looking to solve the defense issue. 41-33 is your final. I mean, it, you know, it was still a fun game. At least it wasn't a blowout, but I would love to hold a team to under 30 points. That would be wonderful. We have a ton of subscribers with good talent. Still early in the season, so I imagine that our, our boys will pick it up. But first couple weeks just have been very rough. 
and gotta stop launching the interceptions here. Jalen Hurts had two in his own right, but Bo Nix now with six picks in two games. I mean, elite quarterbacks may only throw in the neighborhood of six picks the entire season. Uh, CMC did good, but again, we had to go away from him because of the way that the game went. Sam Laporta was killing it. Mike Williams was killing it. Mark Cooper was doing pretty good as well. Uh, Romeo Dobbs got in there. David Njoku had a good game. And Floyd Butler, only two for 20. They weren't really using him too much is, is kind of the thing. Picks for Roquan Smith, that was a good one by me. Julian Love, Drew Tranquil, Xavier Woods, Michael Carter. They all had some picks. Uh, Drew Tranquil was all over the place, man. No sacks either. We got to find a way to clean that up. And Silas Vaden had a TFL subscriber player. Uh, let's look at our other subscribers. Jaden Taylor had five tackles, a TFL, and a pass defense. So that was pretty good for him. Would have loved to see him get a pick in his opener, but just didn't play out that way. Aiden Leslie had two tackles. No game-wrecking plays. We definitely could have used it. Austin Kringle only with one tackle. And then Jax Vaden. He had two tackles, and that's about it. But we take the L, but time to check out the subscriber players for the rest of the league here in week two. Oklahoma Eels take a tough loss to the Fort Worth Rough Riders here. And we'll take a look at subscribers on the running back and quarterback position. Mason Buchanan had a quiet game, 129, one touchdown. No picks, but you got to do just a little bit more than that to get a win in the SFL. David Montgomery played well. Grom Briner, 14 for 54 Averaging 3.9 yards per carry. Not a great game. No touchdown. So hopefully our uh, subscriber duo. Actually, the Eagles are in our division. So hopefully for you guys, you bounce back. For me and the Terminators, maybe not so much. But looking to get a much better performance next week in week three. Boulder Rockies and their new subscriber quarterback improved to 2-0. Beating the Dakota Pronghorns. And Lucas Thomas, I mean, kind of an underwhelming performance. But a dub is a dub. 120 and a touchdown. I'm noticing a lot of uh, low yardage games for QBs here in simulation. And I, I mean, really kind of noticed that too last season, which is kind of odd. But at any rate, nice W for our, one of our newest subscribers here, Lucas Thomas on the Rockies. San Jose Industrials, big, big win over the Toronto Thunderbirds. My team from last year. And Drake May continues to light it up back to back weeks now, almost 300 yards and three touchdowns. Did he get subscriber Yeezy Fuentes going? He sure did. I mean, seven for 95, no touchdowns, but that's okay. Say Flowers had the touchdown there, but a nice performance from Yeezy, D Drake May, and these industrials. Salem Steelhawks drop to the Massachusetts Smithies. We got three subscribers on the Steelhawks here. Cameron Moore played well, 212, two touchdowns. Would like to see the yardage up a little bit. I mean, he played better than Jaden Daniels. Uh, no picks as well. So I'm guessing it was probably the running game. I mean, again, like even I guess Jaden Daniels ran a lot, but Isaiah Pacheco played good. So not really too sure where the uh, the points came from, but the Smithies got just a little bit more. And we also got some subscriber defenders here. Daniel THG, he had five tackles and a TFL. And then defensive end, not Oreo. Only three tackles, so probably could have used a sack or a TFL or two in there. Uh, but the Steelhawks do take the L in this one, unfortunately. Albany Argonauts drop to the St. Louis Sentinels. And we got to take a look at, uh, oh, God, Desmond Ritter. Yeah, he tore us up in the first, uh, first episode. But Bobby Donuts, a pretty good game in his SFL debut. 19 for 74, nearly four yards per carry average. Did find the end zone as well, but it wasn't enough as the Albany Argonauts do suffer the L to the Sentinels. Jersey Shore D's beat the Las Vegas Jacks. They got Lamar Jackson, so they're going to be getting lots of W's, I would presume, in this first season. But we got a subscriber quarterback here, Aiden Grau, and he had uh, four tackles and a TFL. No interceptions, no sacks, but... Nice to see him in the backfield and getting a nice TFL in that one. Portland Destroyers crushed the Louisville Fighters. And this is a team that we see next week with the uh, subscriber receiver Alexander Klobleck. Now, in this game, he only went three for 15. So not really, uh, you know, wasn't utilized too much. It was mainly Keenan Allen. But we see these guys next episode. They just got a big W under their belt. 
They got a good team, so we're going to have to hone in and make sure that you check out next week's episode as we take on Kleblek here, subscriber, wide receiver, and the Portland Destroyers. Topeka Silverbacks get the win over the Milwaukee Motors. That was the game of the week, it said. And Kyrie Brooks, the quarterback, 214 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Not the most overwhelming game. DeAndre Swift had a lot of carries, um, but a win is a win. And it looks like the recipient of that touchdown was also DeAndre Swift. So nice win by Kyrie Brooks and the Silverbacks. And what a thriller. Uh, Spirits beat the Rebels 40 to 36. That's pretty much like, looks like our game stat line, right? And we got a couple subscriber QBs here doing battle. They look like they both played pretty good, but Caleb Hayes, 341 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Got to uh, give kudos to my man there. He played awesome. Chase Kaiser, 241, two touchdowns, but those two picks might have been what did it. Look at Elijah Moore, too. Wow. He, he had some type of game. And subscriber receiver George Smith, only two for 18, but the Spirits, you know, they definitely got some weapons, and they do get a four-point win over the Rochester Rebels. So that is, guys, going to wrap up week number two here in the SFL. Next three weeks, subscribers on every team. Week three against the Destroyers, week four against the Rebels, and week five against the Spirits. And you even see Caleb Hayes there. Uh, got the little news story uh, shines in Rochester. Yeah, I would sure say so. So we're going to have to watch him and uh, the Spirits in week five. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.